Essex Music. Later today, Boggins. I'm gonna let you off first. After Boggins. Mandy Megaphone. I'm on my megaphone. But now, it's Adam and Joe. Hello and welcome to the big British castle. It's time for Adam and Joe to broadcast on the radio. There'll be some music and some random talking in between. And then eventually the whole thing will just end. There was a trail before that record that said, coming up soon, Boggins. Yeah. And that's very c- overconfident for a trail, because we can't predict when that dog will come into the studio. I mean, how can the jingle be so confident that the dog will come in? I think later. They said just said later. There wasn't a specific time, oh, So it could there? be any, t- any time in the future. In the future. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Is that how people use later? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, that's how I'll- Jules Holland uses it. Jules Holland's later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be dead later. The world will get better later. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. <laughs> That's my favourite expression. How are you doing, listeners? This is Adam. Hey, this is Joe. Thanks for listening, especially if you're listening live. And remember, if you are listening to these talkings live, then you're a member of Black Squadron. And we're going to have a command for you in a second. I might discuss the commands with Count Buckley's during the next record just to make sure... You know, we're on message. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good idea. Incidentally, you just heard the selector there with On My Radio. Mm. Before that, uh, Yare played some dreadful noise by some young band, Nirvana. I mean, I don't think they're going to amount to much. (laughs) 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 They they did. They did. They were one of the biggest bands of Mm. the 90s. The 90s. (laughs) So what, what, imagine... Me saying that I don't know if they're going to amount bom, to bom, much. Bom. Just started reading a mag. <laughs> <laughs> I started reading a mag in to the middle kill of time. That sentence yeah. while I was while I get finished. Do you think my torso is good enough to appear in a Twilight film? No. Like to be a vampire? <laughs> you haven't seen my torso for a while, but do you think it's good enough? No. I mean, I think I could be a vampire in no. Twilight. <laughs> no, you, I mean, do you care about my response? <laughs> Not really. No, 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 mm. no, no. No, you're never going to be in a Twilight film. Are you sure? Yeah, not unless it's by accident. What about as, like, an evil, like, more mature vampire? Right, yes. What about this? Ah! <laughs> oh, well, that was frightening. Yeah. Listeners, I wish you could have seen it. It, was, it did chill <laughs> the marrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, all you have to do. But as one of Twilight. the sexy young ones, what about the vampire's assistant? My children are obsessed by seeing that. Is that a comedy film? Or is uh, that... that's another series of books, I think. Is it? Yeah, that they've adapted to try and fill the void that's about to be left by Potter. What is it with vampires and zombies? I've had my fill. Have you? Yeah. We should talk about that later. Maybe. Well, that's uh, fun to look forward to, listeners. Later. Also, <laughs> later, with Jules Holland. Uh, we're going we're gonna to have, like, text the nation and uh, all our usual features. We're, we're going to investigate the whole Boggins situation a little later on. But right now, here's Camera Obscura with the, sque- the sweetest, the sweetest thing. Let's go! Always catch the beginning of the show. Black Squadron don't want to miss a thing. That's not the way Black Squadron rolls. Went to bed at a reasonable hour. Gotta be sharp on Saturday morning. That's the secret of the Squadron's power. Black Squadron! Black Squadron is, of course, the elite listening force who listen to this program live uh, every Saturday morning between nine and half past nine. Yeah, exactly. And we have a command for you this morning, Black Squadron. It's a photo command. We'd like you to stand by with your cameras and mobile phones as quickly as you possibly can. When the next record starts, you have to take a photo along the theme. How uh, many people responded last week? It was about 140. It was our highest number ever. Record response. Yeah. And have they all gone up on the website? I think they have. Toilet paper, Egyptian mummy attack. It was a long-winded one last week. Yeah. We had uh, two or three alternatives. Adam and I were discussing them during that record. But... Our suggestions were superseded by a suggestion from a listener, Brigadier Young of Black Squadron, who's uh, in his house awaiting his orders. He's made a brilliant suggestion that both Adam and I have seized upon. Are we ready? Yeah, we're going to fire off a free play as soon as Joe issues the command. And uh, this is a track by Spoon, one of my favourite bands. And it's a track that, uh, you know, the title is What I'm Like Feeling. 
Okay. <laughs> cool. It's called Everything Hits at Once. I've had a week where, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it never rains, but it pours. Oh, man, I'm sorry to hear like that. that. So you're clutching your elbow as well. Elbow. I'll tell you about hey, the elbow Let's later. have a big moan in after this. I'm going to have the a command. massive moan in. I can't wait. Because I've had the week from the toilet. So, Spoons, Everything hit, Hits at Once is going to come up. Uh, and, James, it's, very, it's sort of slow fade in, so you might need to fire it off as Joe is issuing the command. Are you okay. ready, Joe? Yeah, well, I don't know about that. We usually have a, a punchy record immediately after the command. If James gets it right, as soon as Joe starts issuing the command, it'll work. Will it? Yeah. Okay, this is the, the number to send your photos to by text 64046 uh, or by email adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.uk. Text will be charged at your standard message rate. And remember, if you do send us a picture, particularly with this command, it, it will go possibly on our blog, so you have to be ready for that eventuality. Yeah, exactly. Stand by, Black Squadron. Here comes the command. In pants, in street. That is Camille. She is from France. I don't know nothing about her. What's oh, the deal with her? What's she's the dealio? A little fairy from France. Un petit fairy de la France. Fairy de de la France. And that song is called Ta douleur. That means your pain. Oh. Does it? Is it ta? Ta douleur. Is that your pain? Whose pain is it? If it's ta douleur. What's it called? Where's where is it? T a douleur. I think douleur means pain. I don't know. Something pain-related. Anyway, that was Camille. She sounded very nice. She is very... She's beautiful looking. Look at that. So and listen, lovely. Black Squadron, your response has been extraordinary to the command. A very challenging command this week. Mm. I mean, we're really pushing them. Pants in street. Yeah, because it's cold out there. You're wearing your pants... And you've got to go in public. You know, that's really pushing the squadron, don't you think? Yeah, it really is. Um, are you excited about the results that are coming in, Adam? Sure. We're getting some great pictures of people uh, standing in the street. Some good-looking, very good-looking men in their <laughs> pants out there in the street with their arms folded trying to keep warm <laughs> by the bins. And uh, But listen, man, listen. Before we get into that, we'll come back to that because they're still coming in. Yeah. And the squadron is still uh, standing to attention so to speak, yeah. for another eight <laughs> minutes. Um, but listen, you've had a terrible week. You were telling us had that you've my had a, Yeah. Uh, Elbone continues to be a problem. Went for an MRI this week. You know what an right. MRI is? Well, is that when you get into one of those big washing machines? The big washing machine. And it whizzes around all and scarily. usually, I assumed those were just for sort of brain things. Do they inject you with magnets? kind of thing mm. i mean you you are told before you go into the big washing machine that you can't have any metal on you whatsoever because basically you're being passed through what is as far as i can tell a massive electromagnet what about uh, your adamantine bones uh no it's not a problem for me because uh i've been cured of all that stuff uh, okay. of my wolverine problems all right <laughs> but if but wolverine absolutely would not be able to have no. an mri because all It'd the be like popping time, in the microwave yeah it would mm. it would rip out right through him mm. they say like have you ever had shards of metal in your eye because oh. then you can't you can't go into the machine because otherwise they would the magnets will pull them out That's pull them amazing. right out Ay, ay, ay. It's scary. And it makes this terrible noise when you go in there as well. Is that the thing that she does in the film The Exorcist? Yes, exactly. One of, that's one of the most terrifying bits in The Exorcist, yeah. when she goes and has all those scans. I think so, yeah. I mean, they... I guess they're more modern now. They're, those were big 70s you machines. You would think so, wouldn't you? But they are still massive. I think that you can only get them so small because the physics of the thing is just about the amount of electricity they have to pass through these things and that's right. what makes all the noise bang 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 and they why say like go bang because it's the sound of the electricity i said why is it so noisy can't they like you know it's like the modern world we've got ipods and stuff can't they make like a quieter version and then i said no it's just that's physics that's the noise that that amount of energy makes it's never going to be quieter a than banging that banging noise like a huge demon trying to get through the door honestly <laughs> and she goes it's very loud so i'm going to put some earplugs in and by this time I was lying she, down... in her ears or yours? In my ears. Oh, I nice. was lying down by this time in a very awkward position with my elbow in front of me lying face down on this thing. Incredibly like uncomfortable. Superman. A little flying bit like Superman flying. <laughs> except if <laughs> Superman was holding a chicken switch in his uh, other hand. You get a chicken switch? You get a chicken switch if you can't handle it. Because what might you not be able to handle? The noise? The noise, the uncomfortableness. You have to lie absolutely still for half an hour. No. While this thing happens. Is there a telly? There's no telly. Radio. I think for children, sometimes, depending on what position you're lying in, sometimes for children they give you they a little They should have telly. some six music. That would be a perfect um, environment to listen to Wouldn't some be George able Lanner. to hear it. Bang, 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 b
wah, 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 wah. It sounds like a kind of extreme hardcore German techno club. Yes. And even before you go in, there's a, there's a pump that operates the machine that goes. <laughs> Bifa. And I swear, I, 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 I said to the nurse, like, is that music playing? Are they playing, like, techno music? She said, nurse, the sound of the pump. And she looked at me like, you idiot hole. Obviously, we're not playing techno music before you have an MRI. But that's what the whole experience was like. It was horrific. Wow. I, I mean, it was just, and then after a while, you start to zone out, you know what I mean? And, and, and you mm. become hypnotised by the grimness of it all. So, dude... How Dude. long have you got? I've got about, I would say, till the end of next till month. Till later? Yeah, later. later you, with, you're gonna live till a bit later. With Jules Holland, yeah. And they didn't, all they could tell me at the end of it was, you got swollen tendons. Mm. Don't know what that That's is. Good. Someone mentioned arthritis. Mm. I mean, you don't want arthritis, for goodness sake. So I don't know, I haven't got like a definite uh, thing yet. And then, to make matters worse, someone nicked my bike. Thanks very much. Get out your MRI. Same day. Bike nicked, yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot for that. You sure it's not stuck to the side of the MRI machine? <laughs> <laughs> Having been pulled in by the force of the magnets? Could be. I mean, I'd, I'd look on the bottom. The back. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Man, that's chopped. terrible. That's awful. I mean, that feels like more than, a, more than you would want for a link. I mean, this, that feels like you could do a whole five minute ranting on the bike. Yeah, I could do, couldn't you I? You could do. Well, I mean, why don't we have that in hand for All later? Right. I've been thinking about the things that I would do to the guy. Shall we stand down the squadron? We'll stand down the squadron, then after the... Well, just before the news, we'll, we'll recap some of your extraordinary and some quite provocative photos. Mm. Uh, what did I say we were doing next? Uh, we're going to stand down the squadron, but we, we can stand them down after we play a bit of Donovan, though. Here's Sunshine Superman. Quebec squadron! Stand down, your work is done. You've earned yourself a nice warm bath And maybe a nice little bun Black Squadron stood down And an excellent response to the In Pants in Street command Very good, you can put your clothes back on And come back inside now, Black Squadron If that's a bit like I'm mad as hell And I, I'm not going to take it anymore From, from network, network, you know right. If you looked down your street uh, And saw someone else standing outside their house in their pants you'd know they were listening to the program and, and you imagine might what kind of panty moment there might be between you panty fine right <laughs> if you suddenly saw a neighbor who i mean that's a good dating tactic sure. just to for the first meet to be in pants i've never i've passed you so many times in the street but see you now in your pants <laughs> i want to know more about you are you a vampire from Twilight? <laughs> you will never be a vampire from Twilight. <laughs> Look at your torso. <laughs> Put your clothes back on. We're going to talk in more detail about some of those photos after the news, which is coming up right now. Ziga Zigor from Cuba Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> Say the title of that song then. Uh, well, I can't read it. Hang on. Oh, it's gone away. Inimer Singer Vitle Singer. Oh, it's not too hard to say. Inimer Singer Vitle Singer. Oh, it says here, Icelandic for within me a lunatic sings, but then it's crossed out. Is that because it's inaccurate? Mm, it means... Maybe Sif, our Icelandic supermodel listener, can text in us. Singer, Vitli Singer. Tell us what that means. In Do you think Sif still listens? Do you remember Sif? Sure, I remember Sif. I Who think about it all the Sif? time. <laughs> <laughs> if she still listens, maybe she can do She's a little translation model, for model that. She's part of model squadron. She is. <laughs> Speaking of the squadrons... Yeah, we had a, a very good response, as we've already said, to our Black Squadron command this morning, which was Pants in Street. That was the first Black Squadron command to be sent in by a listener. I think he just called himself Brigadier Young. Yeah. I'm not sure whether he's just a young brigadier or whether Young is his name. Maybe he can clarify that. But we had a, an amazing photo from Black Squadron member number 23775, he calls himself. And he appears to be in Rio de Janeiro by a flight of those beautifully tiled steps that you get in that part of the world. You know those um, kind of towns that are on very steep hills and they're yeah. stepped. And then people have put beautiful sort of broken, shattered tiles and made collages along the steps. Lovely mosaics spelling out the words uh, Rio de Janeiro there. It might be Rio, it might be somewhere else. No, Don't I'm know. pretty sure. I mean, it could be white leaves of Bayswater, I suppose. Yes. But I think it's unlikely. The people behind him look very authentically Brazilian and sort of sexy, and they might be going to samba classes or something. And of course it's a challenging command because not everyone wants to be seen in their pants, do they? 
we didn't get many responses from ladies, for instance, I noticed. There's、mm-hmm. a lot of quite proud, stupid looking men. We got one from a lady who was very far away. <laughs> well, that's a good tactic. <laughs> And the best one we got was from Hannah Wooler, who is, look at this, she's sitting in a chair. In a, she's actually taking a chair out into the middle of the road. And she's reading a lady brain rotting man. <laughs> in her bra and panties. <laughs> It's a good picture. And that'll be going up on the blog unless you take some kind of legal action in the next half hour, Hannah. A lot of good looking torsos and, and some pleasingly out of shape ones as well. Yeah, yeah, some interesting tattoos have been revealed. But we'll put the best of these photos. In fact, we'll just put them all、yeah. with a certain amount of editing for decency. And, you know, safety reasons. Some people are too sexy. Some we, people are too sexy. We're a little bit、that. too young. <laughs> yeah. So we'll just go for the, the, the ones that an adult brain can handle on the blog there. But thank you, everybody. Look at that one. It's a guy that's dressed up in like an army helmet. See? Simon and Ginny in Glasgow. Amazing. He looks, I mean, he looks as if he needs to be locked up somewhere. But I like this idea of doing things in the street. And I think we should maybe grow that. Yeah. For next week. Or a way that if someone else in your street listens to the show live at 9 a.m., you could identify them. That's right. You could poke your head out the window and see if anything crazy was going on in your street. Yeah, and if yeah, it was,、yeah. it's probably related to this <laughs> show. <laughs> <laughs> should we not do it then? I like it. I was only saying it like that as a fun thing to say. It doesn't make it something we shouldn't do.、Mm. Okay. Because it's fun! <laughs> <laughs> Here's Big Audio Dynamite with E equals MC squared. Big Audio Dynamite there. Don't forget that Don Letts is part of the Six Music family and he's got a show this evening, I think, from 9 11. From 9 11. It started a long time ago, didn't it? Did it really start in 9 11? Yeah. And it's been going on ever since. Wow. Well, that could just be September the 11th this year. But、And、that's not even、later. true. It's got nothing to do with his show, right? It starts at 11 this evening. How long does it go on, James? One minute. Last for a <laughs> one minute program. <laughs> one minute show. At 11. That would be good. That's what we should have. One hour. What kind of stuff does he play there?、Oh, just does that, like farts. <laughs> recordings, <laughs> field recordings of chaffs. <laughs> For a minute at eleven. From, from around the world. Presented by Don Letts. Hi everyone, Don Letts here. <laughs> I've got some great farts that I've recorded <laughs> around the world. Here's one that Mick Jones passed me on that he recorded in, in Guatemala. <laughs> <laughs> What a fart. <laughs> That's this is really this insulting to Don Letts. Come on, he can take it. Can he, though? He's a ledge. He's going to come in here and lamp your face. He's a punk ledge. You know why I'm doing that? Because one time I went up to him in a club when he was DJing, and I said, and I said Can I shake your hand? I did that thing, right?、Mm. Can I shake your hand? Because I'd just been watching、uh, From Westway to the World, a documentary about the clash that I think he directed. And I just thought it was amazing, and so I wanted to tell him so in that way that you do sometimes.、Mm. You want to pass on the love. He didn't give me any, any love back at all. What? He didn't let you shake his hand? He did, but it was very grudging, and he pretty much he looked angry about it. Like, it's like, fair enough, he was DJing. But I, I waited till he was, like, not doing anything. He wasn't segueing or What anything. What kind of a six music family is this when one member of the family. Dysfunctional! <laughs> <laughs> all right? Abuses another member of the family. So live tune into Don Letts' fart show. <laughs> King Don Letts, he's a legend. He's <laughs> He helped to shape our culture. And of course, it's not a fart show. It's a brilliant show, and it starts at 11 pm this evening. Oh my god. <laughs> We should play a record. We should. Hey, this, this is, a- is a free play. This is from the soundtrack of Fantastic Mix- Mr. Fox, which is wonderful. Are you going to go see that? Yeah. It's good, man. This is Burl Ives. He's a. Old guy from the past. This is called Buckeye Jim. He's got a lot of character. Maybe too much character. Andrew、there. Bird, that was there. The Birdman. I like that song, that was very good. What was that called? From his album Armchair Apocrypha from 2007. That was called Heretics. He's a Chicago based multi instrumentalist, lyricist, and whistler. He's very cool. He's got blue tinted shades.、Mm. And he's playing a violin like a guitar. A couple of quirky features、oh, there. There he is, yeah. To excite quirk fans. He looks a little bit like Barry Gibb. He does, doesn't he? A young Barry Gibb, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Scrawny Listen, and talented. It's time for Retro Text the Nation, listeners. Here's the Jingle Jongle. I like to listen to Adam and Joe. 
but I listen to the podcast, not the live show. I used to feel acute frustration because I couldn't join in with Text the Nation. But now my troubles have disappeared because Retro Text the Nation And now my letter might be read out instead of thrown in the bin and forgotten about. So last week's Text the Nation was, you know, forgive me for describing it this <laughs> way, Count Buckley's, but it was a little bit nebulous. It was slightly unfocused. Uh, it was about kind of disastrous half-term trips, family holiday trips. Yeah. That kind of thing, like <laughs> not some <laughs> holiday trips was how I I like the idea. That's a good it. idea, but I still can't get my head around how that criteria changes the nature of the stories. Like, are there things that can only ever happen on no. half term? <laughs> no, I mean, it was desperate. It was absolutely desperate. <laughs> but, you know, our listeners came to our rescue, as They really always. did. Here's an email we got from, I have to say this carefully, Schiltz, the vibe man. Uh-huh. Like something else. He says, when I was 11 years old, when I'd been on a half term break to the Lake District. Oh, yeah. You can make that sentence work for yourselves. I said it a bit wrong. While having our picnic, my brother spotted a chap filming the scenery and said that if someone fell over in front of him, he could earn £250 from You've Been Framed. Hey. A weird motivation. Like, why would you want to help the man earn that money? Maybe they're going to split it between them. I don't know. So, I quickly got up, sprinted in front of him, and tripped myself up. Nice. I got in serious amounts of pain. I fell in front of my parents, who looked at my shoulder, which they squirmed at, as it seemed to be protruding out of my skin. I was taken to a backwards doctor's out of a scene in Last of the Summer's Wine, where I waited for an x-ray doctor for two hours to tell me I'd broken my collarbone. Summer's Wine. I did, however, watch You've Been Framed Avidly in the coming months to see if my escapade had earned anyone £250. It never appeared. Ah, uh, that's weird. You know, I was doing that very thing last weekend. That's enterprising. Not popping out my collarbone. But uh, me and the family watched You've Been Framed, which is a great show, let's face it. Last weekend, we all gathered around and watched it. First time the boys had seen it, it was an absolute it's smash. It's a smash. But would you do that if you saw someone just idly camcording something? Would you run in front of them, whoop, and do a, a pratfall? No, not And then go up benefit. to them and go, hi. You might have noticed <laughs> I just uh, had a pratfall in front of your camera. You and I could uh, split £250 each way if our video gets accepted by no. you being framed. Why would you go into business with someone else? M yeah, that's a good way for students and kids to earn money. Yeah, but me and Frank were doing it last weekend. Got any money? Uh, no, we never did it because we ended up flying a plane instead. I was trying to get him to fly... Flying a plane? Like a model plane. What kind plane. of a prank is a that? A model plane. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like an airliner. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our captain speaking. <laughs> Force it into the ground, we'll get 250 <laughs> quid! <laughs> what a sick joke is that? You started it. <laughs> <laughs> you You're going to read one then? Yeah, there's, right there. there's one. Here we go. You really flipped that round on me there. Well, you it started was just talking disturbing. About the image was fun at well, first. Isn't that where then... you were going? I guess so. Yeah, exactly. You're sick. <laughs> uh, on half term, th who's this from? This is from uh, Gil in Essex. On half term day trip I took with my oh, I'll start again. On a half term day trip I took with my family some years ago, we went to the zoo because I loved animals. Loved in the past. Note. Uh, there were my parents, my older brother, my younger sister and me. The drive was uneventful. Long, it seemed to me, but uneventful. I made straight for the lions because they were my favourites. This was the there was one huge alpha male lion in a round enclosure, and as I stood there, he came round to face me. I was enthralled, and I looked him straight in the eye, totally believing that we had bonded forever. It seemed to me that he was looking at me for ages. And then he turned very slowly in 180 degrees to face away from me. I was still transfixed. By now his rear end was facing me, and he very deliberately lifted his tail and urinated all over me. I can tell you now that male lions have large bladders. I was so shocked I couldn't move. My brother, who was about 14, was hysterical with laughter. I was wearing a navy blue quilted jacket. It wasn't waterproof. My mother only had a small pack of tissues. <laughs> <laughs> That's the detail I really like. With which she tried Soaked to wipe me down. Line, 
<laughs> and dry me off like a little pack of hanky. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the end of my birthday treat. My parents saw fit to curtail the outing after that and marched us all back to the car. Me, my smelly lion wee coat, <laughs> and a 90-minute journey uh, home. I've never been that keen on zoos since Gil from Essex. Thanks, Gil. That's epic, isn't it? Listen, we'll do one final one. This is the one I think, Adam, that your subject deserved. <laughs> this is from Andrew in Sheffield. That sounded meaner than it was meant to, Very meant to sound. You know, I wouldn't Listen to this. anything else. Listen to me. this. Hello, Adam and Joe. We went to the Doncaster Dome, which I guess is a smaller version of a biodome without the biosphere. It's a leisure centre. Right. They did have a large swimming pool with some big curly slides. One of the slides was painted to look like a snake and called the Anaconda. After half an hour of splashing with my toddler, I decided to have a go. I climbed the stairs to the slide. They seemed to go on forever. When I reached the top, I was up in the roof of the dome. There was a man there with an eerie grin. He said, there you go, mate. And he was laughing. I was laughing too. I jumped onto the slide with boyish excitement. I pushed off, was immediately plunged into darkness and began to plummet at a terrific pace. My smiley face turned into an expression of concern. I began to fear for my safety as I buffeted through the darkness. I started to worry that I'd been tricked, that the slide was taking me straight to hell. I began to feel acute anxiety. Suddenly I was cannoned out with an immense splash. On reuniting with my family, my wife said I'd turned white and called me stupid. My daughter thought I was a mega dude, loves and hugs Andrew from Sheffield. So he just went down the slide. <laughs> she got me frightened in the middle. But basically he just went down the slide. Because I think <clears throat> myself... <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of the listeners, <laughs> while you were telling that story, <laughs> was sort of expecting it to go somewhere else. No, he just came out the bottom. Like maybe he'd gone down uh, loves the, and hugs, Andrew. the rubbish chute or something, <laughs> or he'd been impaled by a spike at the bottom. No, no, it was just mildly frightening. He went down the slide. <laughs> he went down the slide. Came it out was the other called end. the anaconda. Sure. Mm, there was a was guy dark. at the top, and he said, there you go, mate. <laughs> went down the slide. Came out the other end. See what I mean now? Splish, splash, splosh. <laughs> Good textonation. <laughs> Thanks, listeners. Here's some music right now. This is Elvis Costello. going to be on Don Let's show later on. Madness with One Step Beyond. Don't forget, a little bit later in the show, we'll be filling you in about what happened last Thursday at the BBC Electric Proms when Adam and I did a sort of a thing there. It was good We've done a thing on the floor. We've done a thing. People saw it. It was wicked. We'll be talking about it later on. But right now, I want to get something off my chest. I was uh, arriving in London on the train the other day. It was raining outside and I was just about to get on my bike when I still had it. And, um... I saw a umbrella that had been left behind. An umbrella. An umbrella. Mm. Quite a nice one. Oh. It was uh, a sort of mini one, but it was medium size. It wasn't too mini. Nice, nice, nice. It was nice yeah. wooden handle. Colour? Uh, nice black one. Wooden it's, handle. Yeah, lovely wooden Beautiful. handle. One of those ones where you press the button and it twangs out and erects mm -hmm. over your mm -hmm. head in a pleasing mm -hmm. way. One of those. And then you press the button again and it shuts itself down. Yes. I mean, it's one of the best types of umbrella. So I, I was coveting the umbrella. I was pretty pleased that someone had left it behind because I thought, bongo, free umbrella. So, you know, I was the last one to get off the carriage as well. Everyone had gone. And uh, so it was uh, it had absolutely 100% 100, 100 been left behind. So I scooped it up, shoveled it in my bag. As I am finishing, zipping up my bag. I know there's... Uh, I've, I've got to point this out, but that that's... I mean, you've smoothed over the point where other people might take it to the lost property office oh yes <laughs> i mean there's that little nub. there was there i missed was that, that there at all <laughs> yeah there was that there was that but you know what i just thought who actually goes and gets their umbrella back from the lost property office do you nice umbrella though it wasn't was. it remember how he described it as That's being true, really nice I did, didn't i set it up as you being were really sort of nice. coveting it Coveting the umbrella. It's exactly So the why would the umbrella. owner not cover it in the same way? Of course they would. Well, you <laughs> anyway, I don't mean to spoil the story with No, these, no, um... it's a good it's a very good point. <laughs> it's a very good point. And a, anyway, and, so you steal the umbrella. And a and damning insight. You steal the peasant's umbrella and steal the guy's <laughs> umbrella. <laughs> so yeah. And he immediately gets back on the train. Yes. Like an old guy. Uh, and he's clearly looking for the umbrella. So I say to him, Oh, have you left your umbrella? And he said, Yes, I have. And I said, Yeah, I've got it right here. Um, I was just about to hand it in. Here you go. Did he buy that? I don't think so. What sort of a look did he give you? 
Well, he was pleased to have the umbrella back, but I didn't stick around to scrutinize his face because I didn't even want to deal with the look of, like, you're a liar that he would have legitimately given me. Was there a look of sadness on your face when you gave him the umbrella? It was sort of panic at being so badly busted. And then also coming out with, I was just about to hand this in. <laughs> there Where was, did he produce the umbrella from? I start, My face started to shake with shame and, and bustedness <laughs> at that point. Where did you put the umbrella? Right inside my zipped up bag. <laughs> <laughs> just going to carry this to the lost property office. I put it in my office. bag, I zipped it up so it didn't fall out on the way to the lost property <laughs> office where I was going to hand it in for you. You know, I, this ties quite neatly into... Uh, text the text the nation subject this week, doesn't it? Really, don't you think? Oh yes, I suppose so. Well, we can t talk about that a bit later. Yes, but I mean, I was thinking, you know, it all went off fine in the end, uh, and the guy was pleased to have his umbrella back, and I was pretty embarrassed about what I'd done, but still, no, no bloodshed. Mm. But I was thinking, like, if that had been an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm, can you imagine? Can that would have imagine? been the beginning of uh, a lot of killing and shouting and stuff like that. Whoa! What? You're not even going to say thank you? I handed back your umbrella. You were going to steal my umbrella. You were, you had no intention of handing it. What? I gave it back. What do you want? It's not, I'm going to sue you. I'm going to run you over in my car. What? You're going to run me over in your car because I gave you back your umbrella? What's going on here? I'm going to hunt you down and kill your family. What? That kind of thing. I haven't watched that program in years. That's what it's like. Now I feel I have. <laughs> Free episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm, that brand new, exclusive to the Adam and Joe show. Here's Julian Casablancas with 11th Dimension. He's getting uh, two or three star reviews for that album. Is that good? No, that's not good. No, that's, that's not good, is it? Middle of that's Road. Below half the stars. Yeah, yeah. Do you think he'll be upset by that? I don't think he would care. I think he's devil may care. Yeah. Plus, he's getting enough good reviews that he can stuff those under his pillow and feel the, the work is the work. The public response yeah. is neither here nor there. I like that song, though. That's a good uh, single off there. I'm interested in hearing the rest of the album. Are you excited about Roland Emmerich's forthcoming film 2012? Oh, this is the disaster movie yeah. to end all disaster movies. They showed a big advert for it during the X Factor the other weekend. Yeah. Which I thought was a little bit traumatising for children. Sure. It shows the world ending, basically. That's right. Tectonic plates splitting and tipping into the ocean, entire cities falling into the ocean, massive schisms opening up through densely populated urban environments. And even children running screaming from fireballs Well, it's stuff. John Cusack trying to save his kids. Yeah. He gets his uh, wife and two kids in a plane and they're trying to take off, aren't they? And this crack is opening right behind the wheels. Mm. And then they're trying to fly through skyscrapers that are collapsing and falling into each other. I hate it when that happens. I hate it. So it makes it very difficult to get into work on time. Yeah. And there, there are constant cutaways of the two little kids who must be about 10 or 11 uh, looking through the plane window having to react to this stuff. Yes. Tricky job for a director, don't you think? To make the children react. What, to direct a child? All right, Samuel, you are looking out of the window of the plane. This is Mr. Emmerich. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is this a good accent? Very good. He's German. He's German and he's yes. slightly calm. Yes, he is. Yes. No. Have you not seen his films? <laughs> no. And you look out of the window and the world is ending. <laughs> <laughs> okay, action. How would you, how would you do that face? I mean, this is radio, so it's not a good question. Yeah. I the, mean, the kid, the if, kid. If the world was ending. The world. <laughs> the world. The world. The kid kind of goes blank, which yeah. is the way to do it, really. I mean, sure. you, you can't do a big, uh, like, rubbery expression. Less is more. No. Less is more, yeah. But, uh, well, it's... I wonder if he did any of that stuff that Spielberg used to do about, uh, like, tricking them into reacting right. in certain ways. Right. By showing them dead cats and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spielberg he never bought did a that. cat that looked exactly like the child's like, cat. Like, didn't Spielberg on Off Close did. Encounters say something Well, he like... would dress up as a clown. That was famously what he did when yeah. the little boy was reacting to the spaceships outside the window and he says, Toys! That's, um... But didn't he once do something a little bit dodge, like, say, someone's uh, auntie Dustin died. Hoffman famously on Kramer vs. Kramer made the little boy cry by, by telling him he hated him. Oh, right. Yeah, he made really close friends for him for half of the production then, and then got angry with him, said he was rubbish and not so, doing a good job. Oh. He got that amazing Oscar-winning crying scene. But the whole point of this is that trailer for 2012 has made a deep traumatic impression on my tiny brain. A deep impact. Yeah, and I'm a, like a man type of a thing, and... If you were a child, who can imagine the psychological effect it would have? I had a 2012 dream 
a blockbuster dream. Do you ever have blockbuster dreams where suddenly the production values in your dreams r- skyrocket? You're lucky. I have kitchen sink dreams. Do you? I had a 2012 dream and I was literally in 2012. Wow. I was in a room and the world was ending. Is it in 3D? Uh, it wasn't, unfortunately. Wow, that's a but then 2012 isn't in 3D. That's I don't a shame. think. The world was ending outside the window. Yeah. And I was freaking out because the world was ending. I was panicking and didn't know what to do. So in, so in the dream, I thought, oh, video it. Quickly video it. I grabbed the video camera <laughs> and started videoing these amazing effects that were happening outside the window. Yeah, 250 quid for it. Then someone came up in the dream and put their hand on my shoulder and said, sorry, mate, that's piracy. You can't do that. No way. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty meta, don't you think? That really is. The other thing that freaks me out about that film is the BBFC box in it, right? It's got all this spectacular destruction, the world ending, and the BBFC certification box says, contains sustained moderate threat and one use of strong language. Moderate threat. Have they not u- do they not use the word, word peril anymore? No. Them? Moderate threat, the entire world ending, <laughs> being sucked into a huge chasm while you desperately try to escape with your family, while a crevasse opens up inches from the wheels of your plane. Moderate threat. In the hands of Emmerich, maybe it is. Flying sideways through two collapsing skyscrapers, <laughs> just making it. Yeah. What are the BBFC doing? It's giving away plot points, and they're actually reducing the dramatic impact of films. They're not giving away too many plot points there, though, are they? Moderate. The threat. (laughs) One use of strong language. Yeah. Any full frontal nudity? No. Brief, shocking, full frontal nudity. That's my favourite BBF. (laughs) 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 Or prolonged, shocking, full frontal nudity. I know, I don't like those films, you know, because they are depressing. I don't like to think about the world ending. It's not fun for me. Like, I saw Drag Me to Hell the other day. And that's sad as well. <laughs> <laughs> it does, yeah, it's got a sad ending. It's got a very sad ending. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't prepared for it. Here's a free play for you right now, listeners. Now, how do you feel about this, Joe? I'm going to play a bit of classical music. Hmm. Uncomfortable, unnerved. Are you unnerved? Yeah. And this isn't even from, like, a soundtrack or anything like that. This just popped up. What I did is uh, I was loading some classical music onto my father-in-law's iPod. I think this is your your Chilean, your Spanish blood. Maybe. Your mum's side of the family coming through here. So when I was uh, loading this stuff for my father-in-law, I made a copy of some of it for myself as well, because I thought, you know, nice. Spread the net musically, listen to some stuff you wouldn't normally listen to. So this popped up on my iPod the other day when I was cycling, and I really enjoyed it. I thought, I'm going to play this on the show. But then I thought, maybe this is actually going to repel listeners, because it's too... You know, it's got nothing to do with Six Music's remit. Is it a problem? Anyway, it's very short, and I hope you enjoy it. This is Fernando Saw. He's an 18th century composer, Spanish composer, Oh, my Joe. God. Yeah, and uh, this is Six, from his Six Valses. Uh, <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I don't know much else about it. How long does it last? Uh, it's ten and a half minutes. No, it's two minutes. <laughs> it's going to be good. Hope you enjoy. Hit it. I mean, we talked over that. We slightly ruined it. But that was good, though, didn't you think? Yeah, that was good. That was, who was there playing on that? It was, uh, Wilma Van Berkel. Ah, and, Van Berkel. Uh, Robert Kubica. They were playing the guitar on that track, which was by the Spanish composer Fernando Saw, S-O-R. Enjoyable, right? Yeah, yeah, enjoyable. I mean, that's not going to be a problem for six music listeners. They're very broad-minded. That's They've, true. They've got a very Catholic taste. <coughs> you know? so, I think that was a big success. I'm, I'm going to play a lot more of that kind of I'm stuff. I'm going to check the texts and the emails to see what the listeners' <laughs> response is to that direction. Yeah. No, it's nice, man. You know, I'm not suggesting we turn the whole thing into Radio 3 or whatever, but a little bit. It's nice. Mix it all up. It's nice. 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 And then you can rap over it and stuff, maybe. Here's a bit of Blondie. This is Atomic. That's Blondie and Atomic. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. We're going to get into this week's Text the Nation. But before we do, here's a jingle that I've collaborated with uh, a listener to create. This was sent in, the backing track was sent in by Neil in Kingston. He's done a little bit of guitar playing here in a Bob Dylan uh, Come Buffalo Bill style, he says, uh, that he thought we might enjoy this. So here's what I've come up with, Neil. Text it, is that a problem? No! 
sort of quasi bob dylan there that's good the work uh, thanks very much neil and kingston for that uh, so this week what is our subject <coughs> well I, I was cycling in this morning and uh it, when you cycle in very early on a saturday in london the roads are very empty yeah and i cycled past a shop and on the pavement outside the shop was a giant letter e oh a lowercase letter e where did had it come from well i think they were Sean redoing Ryder. the front of the shop but they'd probably gone off for brekkie oh. or a bacon butty left the e line and they'd around. left this e just lying in the middle of the street and this is why it ties into your umbrella thing you were talking yeah. about earlier because when you see something just in the street it's hard to resist the sense that it's public property sure no one wants because it. it's obstructing this letter e like a sort of sesame street letter mm -hmm. just lying there it was very big it was about three or four foot wide it was a nice e what color it was white Ooh. very solid yeah um and i thought i mean i could just have that e. i'm gonna snaffle that e. i could pop that e yeah and take it home uh, but I didn't. I resisted it because I knew they'd miss it when they came back. Sure. But it started me thinking about stuff you see in the street that you just decide to sort of take. Yeah, no one wants that. Either. If it, if something's in the street, then it's pretty. Is it accepted that it's pretty much anybody's anybody's game? Well, you do feel like that when you're a teen, especially. We've discussed this on shop floors. We've discussed before that if if a product falls onto the floor of a <laughs> shop and stays there for a while, <laughs> yeah. some of our listeners in the past have thought that it's then public property. Yeah. But in the street, that's even more exaggerated, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 of <clears> course <throat> it should be said right at the very top yes. of this text of the nation. That's not the case. It's, it's always, not the case. It's going to be, uh, council property, probably, you know, things like road cone, street furniture. But if someone's left it in the street, it suggests that they don't care about it that much, no, doesn't it? I agree with you. <laughs> like everyone's snaffled a road cone, <laughs> haven't they? A road cone, especially Either in your, in your student your days. I mean, it's a bad thing to do, and I remember, I remember getting very badly it's, busted for it's that. It's fun to have a road sign in your room. Of course it is. Don't you think? Because you're kind of repurp repurposing yeah. that stuff a little bit like a an American pop artist might. So this is confessional. When, <laughs> we're not encouraging this kind of behavior no. or condoning it in any way, but we'd like to know what things you have appropriated from the street. Mm, a bit of uh, civil property sharing. Yeah. That kind of the thing. The text number is 64046. The email is adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk. I mean, we, we had a terrible... Uh, we went through a quite pr a prolonged phase of doing this kind of thing mm. maybe we'll talk about it later on maybe. in the show we got some confessing to do and not all of it's legal confessing you dig six music <laughs> it's ten thirty. time for the news that's the eels very enjoyable stuff there from his album ombre lobo ombre oh, yeah that's right uh that's called the look you give that guy adam and joe here on bbc six music a lot of listeners are quite angry about my sniggering during your uh, classical guitar piece uh, it was very popular that. it went down very well oh, that's good i might might dig yeah. out some more you also know, i uh, got chastised for mentioning that i was listening to my headphones can on i my finish excusing there. my chastisement oh yeah i was just gonna say i wasn't laughing at the music it was beautiful i was laughing at your face and uh just the idea of you playing it oh i see I yeah laughing at you yeah 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 that's all right isn't no, it no you wouldn't laugh at guitar virtuosity what would be no. the point who could who could uh yeah i was told off for mentioning that i was listening to that piece of music on my bike of course it's very dangerous and children should never be encouraged to listen to uh anything on their bikes other than the traffic around them and policemen shouting at them and uh youths shouting and rapping in the street and flowers being sold chimney sweeps humming the sound of music <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking I about i don't know just help me i was hoping you'd help me i thought you were i was just reading some text the nations i My thought you were saying something sensible down should we do oh no we're going to talk about the electric prompt yeah now. absolutely okay podcast edit point mm -hmm. so listeners last thursday we did a show at the bbc electric proms which is an amazing kind of uh, explosion of live music events that happens in uh, in the roundhouse in london's camden town and we acquired the top slot mm -hmm. the best slot noon on a thursday <laughs> and the best venue it was actually quite a nice venue wasn't it it was a sort of little seated room with a stage and a hundred fans came along uh, a few thousand people applied for tickets but a hundred uh, i say fans you know list supporters yeah. helpers came along humans. sympathetic <laughs> sympathetic humans came along and we did a kind of hour of messing around the highlight of which were the two performances by our winners of our song wars karaoke competition 
Fish and Chips, Dish and Trips. Uh, Dids and Trish. Dids and Trish. From who, Cornwall. Who did a brilliant uh, version of your song of Nutty Room. Lovely close harmony uh, version of Nutty Room over the backing track. And uh, a young man called, Be called Ben Mercer, who did an amazing cover of Sontum of Qualis. And then I had been sort of um, forced into singing Dr. Sexy, so I sung Dr. Sexy, and I wanted to sing it to someone who had sexy disease. And I turned to the audience and said, who here has sexy disease? Expecting everyone to be fighting uh, to get to the stage. <laughs> yeah. And no one seemed to have sexy Weird. disease at all. No. So we had to force Ben Mercer, only because he had uh, tight, jeans. tight jeans, which is one of the symptoms, to come. And I did a, an erotically charged version of uh, Dr. Sexy. There were certain things that happened, though, that are available to see on a video on our blog. If you go to the Adam and Joe blog, you can check out a kind of 12-minute highlights package, mm. including a montage of the submissions we got for the competition those and those three performances. But there were some things that happened on that day that no one other than the 80 people that were in that room will ever know about. Special things. Special things. That only they will ever experience. Secret things. A secret song, Adam sung. Yeah some experimental segments <laughs> <laughs> um, but right now we're going to play you a little clip package of just some of the highlights from that day six music live from the electric proms ladies and gentlemen hello and welcome to adam and joe's song wars at the electric proms <laughs> Before we introduce you to the winners today, we're going to just play a little compilation. Shout out if you see yourself. Hey! Imagine actually having to do it now. Exactly. Wouldn't that just be awful? Someone, however, does have to do it. Our two winners, we had uh, Dids and Trish who are going to sing my Nutty Room song. And there's Ben Mercer, who's going to sing my Sontum of Qualis song. Welcome to Stupid Question Time. <laughs> Becky, stroke Grace. There we go. Wow, he's going to go to them. How are you doing, ladies? Adam, do what Russell Brandon does on Big Brother's Little Brother and sit, like, on them. Right. <laughs> that's the trendy thing to I'm do. I'm not... I'm... I'm heavier Just get than really, Russell That's Brand. what all presenters do. Get really physically close. Invade. It is, it's true. I'm going to be a bit invasive now, right? <laughs> I'm just going to touch your inner thigh. <laughs> it just seems a bit uptight, I'm just, man. You I'm wanna, patting when it. Russell does it, it's more relaxed. It's still a bit too middle class for this. I'm, All right. I'm just going to pat you on the shoulder there and maybe shake hands. <laughs> anyway, jolly good. Now, could you read out your question for us, please? What is she going to look like with the chimney on her? I mean, the, the, the uh, literal answer, of course, is that she's going to look dreadful because she will be dead. Please give a big, warm welcome to Ben Mercer. Sometimes I wish Roger Moore would come back with a underwater car or some kind of jetpack or a hologram layer on a union jack but he didn't make it to the eight. He'd rather punch you in the face. <laughs> There is bog Now, who, I don't know, in a car. who would like? <laughs> I'm going to eat it. Who would like this? Uh, who would like this segment to continue for a while? But if, if you like boggins, would you raise your hands? Oh, that's a very good showing for boggins. Made up jokes, made up jokes, made up jokes, made up jokes. Did you hear about the giant bird who couldn't fit in at the tiny bird school? He was massively ostrich-sized. Hey, hey, hey. Come good. on, that's good. These are made-up jokes. Yeah? Listen to that, Murray, wherever you are. Can we have Dids and Trish on the stage? A big round of applause for Dids and Trish, please. And they painted beards on. There you go. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you. Have an enjoy. On Six Music. That was recorded 
Live at the Electric Proms on Thursday evening、um, after we did our fun thing in the afternoon. Thanks again to everyone who came along and everyone who contributed to our Song Wars competition. It was great fun and、uh, we really enjoyed it. So thanks for that. Right now we're going to get back into Text the Nation this week. Text the Nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Text the nation could, this week could be summed up with the phrase "things in the street that you nick." I suppose, but, but it's this is a classier program, isn't it? So、I'm、trying to take the emphasis off the nicking, off the stealing, off the illegality.、Yeah. So reappropriated street junk. Like for example, I remember when I was at school, I went to boarding school, right, listeners, like a posh、uh, school, right, and.、Um, In my dormitory, I thought it would be a fun thing to jazz up the dormitory if I got some th- things that I'd found in the street and brought them into the dormitory to make it look more groovy, like a kind of student room. Yes. So I found some stacks of discarded newspapers, like、uh, ah. copies of the Evening Standard that hadn't been sold, and they just leave them out at the end of the night, right? And so, unless they're the copies for the following morning. <laughs> no, they weren't. They definitely weren't. They were discarded ones that were going to be cleared away by the council or whatever. So I kind of transported these stacks of newspapers back to the dorm, and、uh, built like a wall around my bed. With how many stacks, stacks were there? Loads. Like, really? Yeah, like about forty. <laughs> <laughs> and constructed this wall of、That's、newspapers,、cool. and then like the housemaster came in and he flipped his wig, right? And he said, "What are you doing? Are you like a tramp? <laughs> Take these back onto the street. Why are you bringing this rubbish in here?" So it's not rubbish, sir.、I'm、making a wall of newspapers out of newsprint. That's a perfect example. We've had some confessions from people within Six Music here. We've got a text from Tom, who produces Music Week, who says, "My parents still have a set of traffic lights I once liberated in their garage. I woke up one morning after a night out, and they were propped up behind the door in my bedroom. <laughs> I think brackets hope they were being replaced." So he must have had those traffic lights for years. That is the ultimate、um, bit of reappropriation. There, everyone, everyone covers traffic lights. Here's one from Katie in Islington. After some central London riots while I was at university in about 2001, we ended up with a giant McDonald's M on our kitchen、Whoa. wall. We managed to wire it up and light it up. Good one. That's pretty cool. I mean, if、it? you go to Los Angeles, right on、uh, on Sunset or Melrose, I can't remember one of those. There's an antiques shop there, and they sell all that kind of stuff. They charge thousands they for that kind of thing.、Mm. You know, like a Bob's Big Boy,、um, Big Boy Man Diner, yeah, and like a big hollow plastic man. That kind of thing, and like、That's、a big、valuable. golden arches, you would get loads for that. Here's one from Jordan from Stowmarket. When my friends and I were around fourteen. Now, this is a troubling one. All right, this is really <laughs> troubling. I should end with that one. Actually, I'm going to end with that one. I'll do another. Have one. we reminded listeners that we are in no way condoning, condoning the、It's, illegal theft?、Removal. Is wrong, but it can be ambiguous when things are just left in the street. It's not、What's、ambiguous, Joseph Cornish. No, come on, it can be. It is. You don't、theft. leave something just in the street if you really, you know, if it's precious to you. If it's council property, you do because it belongs on the street. It's yeah, street yeah, furniture. Okay, okay. Mister Mister <laughs> Evening Standard Bed Wall. <laughs> Hi, Adam and Joe. When I was at art college in Manchester, some friends of mine had an entire bus stop in their living room, <laughs> complete with the sheet of glass at the back with bus route maps on it. <laughs> From Nile in Camberwell. That's an impressive level of mania. I'm gonna. I'm still gonna delay the impactful one. Uh, I don't know about this one. That was a bit creepy. Hang on. Here we go. Helen in Lewisham. Once I snaffled a whole bunch of Guardian newspapers left outside a newsagent in the early hours. When I woke in the morning, I was surprised to find them in my bedroom. Plus, I couldn't make any financial gain because th- it was all out of date in 24 hours. I would only read them once. It was pointless and shameful. She nicked ones from the day, though. I didn't do that. I, I, I did、sure、the ones from、that? the previous day.、Yeah. Do you want to hear the disturbing one? Go on then. Hi. When my friends and I were around 14, we found a dead cat in the street. We didn't take it, but we returned daily to worship our new cat god, which we aptly named Lucky. Love you, bye, Jordan in Stowmarket. <laughs> Why did you read that? I don't know. You know, I thought they'd actually taken the cat home. I didn't realise that they didn't take it. I was hoping that they did take <laughs> they it home. They were worshipping the just worshipping it in the street. Here's a funny、so、email from some people who worship the corpse <laughs> of a dead cat. I'll read that out on the family show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to offset the pants in the street thing with a bit of darkness. Well done. Job done. Yeah. <laughs>
It's like Lord of the Cats. Keep these emails coming in, listeners. We're keen to hear how you have uh, appropriated and dead cats re- and recontextualized things you found in the street, whether it was a legal thing to do or not. Um, anyway, here's a free play right now. This is Ella Fitzgerald. This is yours, right, Joe? Yeah, this is my little bit of uh, M.O.R. sing song, but this is such a beautiful song. Have you heard Ella Fitzgerald? She's great, yeah, of course. She's got a good voice, wouldn't you say? And one of the best. And this is literally like having a bath. I say that too much, don't I? Literally, because it's not literally like having a bath. No. But it's like, it is like a warm bath. I mean, it would be if I started soaping you down while this was playing. Would you mind? Then it would be literally like having a bath. This is called With a Song in My Heart. This is the voice of the big British castle. You are listening to Adam and Joe on Six Music. We're on top of the hour, you'll be glad to know. Of anything else at all, let's go to the ball. Mommy said if I did not consider it, it now. That's a good song, isn't it? It's the White Stripes. If you listen regularly to this show, listeners, you might know there's like, um, like a really sort of stinky dog that comes in here. Come on, he's sweet. He is very, very sweet, but, uh, he loves us. He's very, he's t- really friendly. This is the thing, he's really friendly, but, uh, he, he's got some problems, hasn't he? He's got some problems with his He's anal just getting plans. old, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I feel like he can speak to us sometimes. Well, know? he talks. I mean, the rumour is around the building that he was the dog that was on that a programme called That's Life that went out in the 70s and mm. famous for being able to say the word sausages. Oh, right, right. But uh, anyway, he's called Boggins, this dog. He's be- he comes into the studio every now and then. If you listen regularly, I don't know, he just wanders around and, you know, someone opens the door and he trots Stampers in. Stampers in. Yeah, it's funny old business. Licks your face. But as you know, we were thinking of um, having him put down. <laughs> <laughs> you were thinking. I was thinking. Well, we were both considering it. We've got a lot of messages from people who would like that to be done. As well as a lot of messages who would l- from people who would like to take care of him. We put it to the audience vote at the Electric Proms, and it was unanimous support for keeping Boggins alive. Is it actually unanimous? It was as if they thought that the idea of killing a living thing just because it was getting a bit old mm. was disgusting and wrong. Yeah. That is a little bit harsh when you put it like that, though, isn't it? Well, but sometimes, you know, sometimes it's difficult with... It depends on Boggins' quality of life, doesn't it? Just looking at the producer now, James, do we need to point out this is not a real dog we're talking about? Okay. No, we don't. We've had some email. (laughs) We've had some emails. Uh, I would like to weigh in on the Boggins the Dog debate. As I listen to your show on my iPod in the morning, the entire show is heard through my in-ear headphones. However, the deranged grunts and incessant lickings of dearest Boggins the Dog do not make for pleasant listening. It feels a bit like my head is being sexually molested by a rabid man-dog who is trapped inside my brain. (laughs) <laughs> wow. Not a pleasant experience in the morning. Oh, Therefore, on. I urge you to put <laughs> poor Boggins the dog down in as humane of a method as possible. Dash, lethal injection, gas chamber, electrocution. Well, I'm not going to read the last two. Oh. Love, kiss, kiss, big kiss, big kiss, big hug, big hug, small kiss, small kiss, big hug, small hug, big kiss, John. There are six kisses from Kate in London, and she says, Dear Adam and Joe, please, for the love of God, put down Boggins. I really can't (laughs) cope with the sloppery saliva noise he makes. It repulses me. Sloppery? Yeah, that's a good word, don't you think? Yeah. Um, And then someone else says, Please put us all out of our misery by putting Boggins out of his. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Linda Kavanagh says, Please. The thing is, Boggins." Boggins still seems happy. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he is suffering, but he's still happy. Here's a little clip just to remind you of what a sweet chap Boggins is. Hello, my name's Boggins, and I love you, and I stink, uh, mainly because I just done a poo in a corner and I ate a little bit. But I love you, and I'm sweet, so I'm going to lick your face. <laughs> Hope you don't mind. And uh, outside, I found a bird, and I ate it. And um, then I was sick, and then I ate that as well. But I love you, and I'm sweet, so I'm going to lick your face and bite your legs. <laughs> oh, you don't mind. Also, I'm going to sleep in your bed tonight in your nice clean sheets, even though I've just been rolling in poo, because I love you. <laughs> How could you not love What that? was? Yeah. What's the point in playing a minute of just incomprehensible dog snuffling noises? Feels like he's speaking to me is the thing when I when I listen to him snuffling really? and snuffling. 
Yeah, because I... I don't get that. He's such a sweet little chap. Because, you know, we got a lot of messages and support. Some uh, some people really love that little fellow. And, <laughs> uh, for example, Stephen Tizard says, Dear, uh, Dearest Adam and Joe, after listening to this week's podcast, I was mortified to hear that Boggins was going to be put down. As a member of the newly founded RSPS Boggins, I felt it my duty to rescue Boggins from such an unnecessary death. And he has... Uh, done it in an imaginary way and he wants to know if it's an imaginary dog that he's imaginarily saving does that mean he's imaginarily saved do you know what i'm saying like he's imagined a whole rescue scenario for right. boggins and because boggins is an imaginary dog does that mean that boggins has been rescued because boggins is what he's imaginary he's what you told me last week he was imaginary <laughs> this is what getting you... very complicated <laughs> what do you well what do you the layers you said last week he was imaginary. I'm playing Did along I? with that. Yes. Did I? And now he's real, is he? Well, is he real? No, he's not, because you can't talk about putting down a real dog on a radio show like that. It would be yeah, weird. He's, he's very ill. He's, he's not really real. Ill. Is he's he real Ill. or is he not real? You're scrambling my mind now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't answer that question. Alexi Vasiliu says, you can't put Boggins down. I'll look after him if you don't want him anymore. If he comes in again... The way to find out whether he's real or not is to kick him. You can't kick a dog. Not even an imaginary but, one. That's what right. I'm saying. You're right. No, but see if he responds, you know what I mean? <laughs> tweet, let's say tweak him. <laughs> right. Let's say tweak him. Tweak I him. didn't mean violently. Tweak I meant his a little tail. Tap. Something. What's yeah. wrong with stroking him, right? And giving mm. him a cuddle and seeing if he licks your face or bites your leg. He stinks. It does absolutely reek. Like you can't cuddle him. He's absolutely rank. Let's here's have some yeah, hot rats. Here's the hot rats with you got to fight for your right to party. That's Gaz and Danny from Supergrass masquerading as the hot rats there with their cover of um, the Beastie Boys. You got to fight for your right to party. You can still listen to the shows that they did for Six Music um, on the iPlayer. And what were they called? The Sunday Best. Month of Sundays. Month of Sundays. I'm such an ignorant guy. I, I mean, I find it very hard to remember anything the older I get. Actually, this is something that I wanted to talk to you about, Joe. I mean, we've mm. spoken about this before. Remembering people's names, right? I mean, it just doesn't get any easier for me, even though I downloaded Darren Brown's uh, memory <laughs> podcast thing. Yeah, someone well, How does he it. do it? He's got various it a, tricks. A memory cathedral? It, right, right, right. Going through a house yeah. and assigning... That's what Hannibal Lecter does. But it's just not possible when you're introduced to someone, it's a loud room or whatever. We should explain, um, um, like a memory cathedral is a technique for remembering things and you remember a physical space in mm. your head. You imagine uh, a house or a cathedral or a mansion and you imagine in great detail each room and you, you put objects or hang pictures that remind you of particular things, right? Is that yeah. the idea? kind of thing. So if you wanted to do, like if you needed to memorise a whole shopping list, for example, then you would assign different items to different parts of that yeah. imagined space. And another that. thing, what's the other really popular technique is... What is it? Is it associating an object with an event? Yeah, well, what a good one that has worked for me in the past is, for example, uh, our producer's called James Sterling, so I would imagine uh, something being stirred, like a cup of mm. coffee being stirred, maybe <coughs> by a starling or something like <laughs> Does that. Does this make you feel loved, James? <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I, I'm imagining a starling stirring some coffee, so there's a little memorable yeah, yeah, image yeah. there, and I'm going to remember James Sterling there, although I might call him James Starling, or James Coffee Starling. That's the only <laughs> potential problem with that uh, thing. But it's an unforgettable image, though. Exactly. The Starling stirring the coffee. Sweet. Um, it's, it's a whole new vista of nightmares that's opened up for me, though, mm. because of the school run, right? And having to go to school with my children. And say hi to parents. Saying hi to oh, parents. God. I am no good. And my wife, she's got like a photographic memory, and she's brilliant. She remembers absolutely everyone mm. and what their children's names are and all this kind of thing. Uh, but the kids, she... kids are difficult. I forgot your daughter's name. That's fair Maybe enough. I can't prompt. remember my friends' children's names. There's so many of them, for goodness sake. I can't remember my family's names, let alone the names of my <laughs> children, <laughs> the children of friends. But then when I'm going into school, it's not, it's a nightmare for me. I'm quaking. For a start, it's very early in the morning. Mm. And I don't like getting up before 10, but <laughs> since I've had a family, I've had to. You get up at 6.30 these days. It's a living nightmare. <laughs> and so you go into school, you, your brain is barely functioning 
and then you're suddenly met by people sort of going hi and smiling at you and stuff and and, and waving and you're supposed to remember who they are and what their son's name is and i can never do it what's and, wrong with just a hi hi how you hey doing? because every now and again it's absolutely clear that i can't remember their name and they say adam to me right <clears throat> and you should come back with their first name mm. in response mm. and i don't and it, i feel so bad and i can tell that they are going you just are an idiot hole and you can't re you know it's so rude not to remember my name you've met me several times you know what i think what i think that's their fault well i think you're mature enough for people to forgive you that i hope so i really do and you shouldn't get upset about it here's one that, too short. here's one that maybe i wouldn't have been forgiven for though mm. the other day my wife said can you please tell frank's teacher that he keeps forgetting his homework can you can you ask her to ensure that he takes it home with him at the end of every day so I'm like, yeah, okay, remind again, talk to Frank's teacher, okay. So I go into the classroom with him. There's no one there, right? We're the first in. And then the next person to come in is this lady. And she looks familiar, and I'm like, ah, there you go, Frank's teacher. So I'm talking to her, and I'm saying, hi, yeah. And she's like, oh, hello, how are you? I'm like, yeah, good, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I say sort of half-heartedly, because I'm not 100% sure it's his teacher, but I'm thinking, I'm going to throw myself into this. Yeah, um, Frank uh, keeps forgetting to bring his homework back, so I'm really sorry about that. And I was, and she's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, I was, oh, so I'm wondering if there's, if you can sort of just remind him and, and stuff just to make sure he, he, he does bring, and she's like, mm, okay, um, I don't know. I, and then, <laughs> yeah, obviously I realised it wasn't his teacher. Who it was, was it? It was just a parent, a parent <laughs> that I'd met know? before. You'd yeah, met before, oh yeah, yeah, I'd met them before. Yeah. A number of times and uh, <laughs> that's terrible it was absolutely awful i was mortified i just wanted to run and jump out of the window what about what about this technique right yeah this is something that happened to me when we were at the sony awards a producer came up who used to produce for us at the other radio station and he said hey joe i said hey uh and then didn't say his name and he just came straight back with you don't remember my name do you nice and so what did i come back with Yes, of course I remember. I said, of course I remember your name. <laughs> that This was my tactic. It was, of course, are you really accusing me of not being able to remember your name? It's like peep show. I said to him, and he came back with, yes, I am. You really don't remember my name, do you? So it went from jokey to quite a serious confrontation <laughs> within standoff. a couple of seconds. So I stuck to my guns. I was just like, yes, and I can't believe you're asking me to actually say your name. No way! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I went for. <laughs> I, I was still slightly tongue in cheek, but not a lot of tongue anymore. Talk about curb Rapidly your enthusiasm. Rapidly diminishing tongue. What? You're, insu you're <laughs> accusing me of not remembering your name now? I'm insulted. He got quite aggressive, and he Whoa. got. He was. You don't. You don't remember it. Stop pretending you do remember it. You don't. I was like, of course I do. How dare you? It got really bad. How did it finish? It didn't. It just tailed off. Whoa. Yeah. So that's a, you know, that's a cautionary tale. That's a tactic not to do. Yeah. I say fess up as, as, as well, I did. As I just, I just said to her, I'm re after a, a few uncomfortable seconds had gone by and she was staring out the window thinking, that guy's an idiot. I just said, I'm so sorry. I just called you Frank's teacher, didn't I? I was talking to you as if you were Frank's teacher. You're not Frank's teacher. I'm really, really sorry. But even the act of saying it just made me seem even more pathetic mm. and adult. You know what I'm saying? I think you're very human and lovable. <laughs> oh god he's here again <laughs> quickly get Person, out boggins look i've got to talk about the free play here is um a track from the very best's album we've played their single before that they did with the guy from vampire weekend but this is uh, i'm really enjoying the album it's the kind of thing i wasn't sure i was gonna enjoy but it's grown on me like a, a wonderful fungus this is yalira i'm doing a gig with john richardson this week at the hundred club cool He's, I think he's emceeing or, I can't remember if he's emceeing or doing a, a stand-up bit himself. But he's very talented stand-up, that guy. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, mm. looking forward to seeing you if you're coming along on Thursday, listeners. No, I'm, I'm not going to. Oh, sorry. No, I wouldn't invite you. Do you like, um, do you like just fun quizzes? I love quizzes. Do you love just a fun quiz? Sure, I love a fun quiz. Just for no reason? Yeah. A sort of, uh, a sort of general knowledge kind of a quiz? Mm-hmm. Do you want to do one? The listeners could I'm do very one. bad at general knowledge, though. Well, it's pop cultural knowledge. The listeners could, uh, could join in at, okay. at home or wherever they are. Just for fun. We like fictional bands, you know what I mean? Yeah. Don't we? We like a good fictional band in a, in a novel or a... So I'm going to read you the name of a fictional band. You have to tell me what movie it comes from. Okay, right? good one. Hey, that's my bike. Hey, that's my bike. What film's that from? A, an old film, 90s even. Is it? 
I mean, there's a few of these, bike. so how long should I give you to think about them? Uh, I've no idea. Hey, that's my bike. No idea. Reality Bites. Reality Bites, of yeah. course. How about this one? Timmy and the Lords of the Underworld. Uh, Come on. That's not the Lost Boys, is it? Timmy! And the Lords of the Underworld. Timmy! Timmy! <laughs> What's that? What's that? <laughs> South Park, you nutbag. Kurt Wilde. Oh, I know Kurt Wilde. That's Velvet Goldmine. Famous rock singer Kurt Wilde, yes. Nick Rivers. Nick Rivers! I know Nick Rivers! Come on, push! Oh. 80s film. Zucker Brothers. Yes, yes. Uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, top Secret. Yes, Val Kilmer. Sim 1. Sim 1. That's <laughs> okay, from... You know, that's from, yeah, yeah, that's, that's from that, Simone. That's a fictional rock star. She's good, though, isn't she? She's, I mean, if she existed in the real world, she'd be very famous. She's computer generated. I know that gig, the big stadium gig, <laughs> is amazing. That's one of the most incredibly <laughs> idiotic <laughs> films ever made. Sim <laughs> one. Okay, Baldwin and the Whiffles. What? That's a that's a made up one. No, it's in a film. Baldwin and the Whiffles. The lead, the lead singer is. I think it, it, well, it's a film with Johnny Depp in it. Not Alec Baldwin. No. Uh, Johnny Depp. That's a good name for a band, though, don't that's you brilliant. think? Baldwin and the Whiffles. Definitely. It's from Crybaby. John Waters. Crybaby. Oh, there you go. Crucial Taunt. Crucial Taunt. Who's that? That's famous, man. Crucial Taunt. 90s famous. Uh, singles? Nah, Wayne's World. Wayne's World. I don't remember that from Wayne's World. Wild Stallions with a oh, Y. There you go. That's easy. That's Bill and Ted. Uh, yeah. Cherry Bomb. Cherry Bomb. It, this is obscure. Can I say singles again? No. There's some bad bands in singles. It's a film that stars a duck. Oh, Howard the Duck. Yes. Nice. Cherry How bomb. many other films <laughs> star a duck? And final one. What film is this fictional rock star from? Lady Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> the answer's Baby's Day Out. Oh. That's the end of the quiz. <laughs> it's just a fun quiz. It was just a fun quiz. Here's Peter Bjorn and John. Uh, Peter Bjorn and John with the home base ad there. Tiny bit overplayed. Oh, come is that, on. Is that a oh, it was a question. Is no. It, do you think it's a tiny... No. 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 You're going to start telling me that Hey Ya by Outcast is overplayed <laughs> next, you freak of nature. Was that a remix of that, or is that the original mix? That's the oh, one, boy. I forgot it went all bongo crazy. At the you end. didn't hear um, Desert Island Discs with that lady sailor on the other day, did you? I should have brought in her selections. It was... And this is going to sound very sexist and reductive, but it was the most classic selection of lady music you've ever heard. <laughs> what kind life. of thing? Uh, there was... Is there some Enya? There's a bit of Phil Collins on there. There was um, Boys of Summer by Don Henley was on there. Any M people? Uh, there could well have been some M people. But, I mean, oh, I, I wish... I, maybe we'll try and call it It'll up. be online, won't it? It'll yeah. be on the Radio 4 site. I'm sure they'll have a list of what was on Desert Island. Hit, uh, lady hit after lady hit after lady hit. <laughs> it was classic. <laughs> Punch me in the face, please. I deserve it. Here we go. Wallop! Boosh! Thanks very much. Coming up still in the last half hour of the Adam and Joe Six Music Radio Show, we have got some more textination, and we've got made-up jokes for you, and the made-up jokes are still coming in thick and fast. I've got but some good ones, man. I've got some I've got some jokes that are so good that I, they've made me suspicious. Oh, really? A gentleman has sent in two really, really good jokes, so he's either a liar or some kind of a genius. Hmm. Or maybe both. It's 11.30, it's time for the news. Lovely stuff. Calexico there with Crystal Frontier, Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Check out some of these lady hits from Dame Ellen MacArthur. Hey Ya, which is what reminded me. Mm. You know, that's fair enough. These are all good songs, incidentally, but uh, it was just having them all bang one after the other. Here with me, Dido, Through the Barricades, Spandau Ballet. <laughs> uh, and then topping it off with, oh yeah, I Wish It Would Rain Down by Phil Collins. Topping it off with Fix You by Coldplay. Bang. Come on. That's adventurous taste. She could do, like, she could compile a whole album just called... That would be very successful. Lady Albums music. like that sell really well. <laughs> yeah, they do. Should we have some made-up jokes? Yes. Here's a jingle. I'm a funny person. I often make up jokes. My jokes are more amusing than those of other folks. When you hear my joke, I think you'll find that you agree. Come on, you're all invited to a made-up joke party. So I was reading these jokes last night, reading through all the listeners' jokes, and uh, as I said, I came across these two really well-crafted jokes, suspiciously well-crafted, and now that I look at them in the cold light of the morning, I don't think they can be made up. Hmm. Do you know a guitarist that could make... Hang on. Do you know a guitarist that could make me a yeasty sandwich? No, but Johnny Marmite. Brilliant. You see? Suspiciously brilliant, though. 
here's the next one he sends and there's no context he just he just fires out the two jokes then says goodbye here's joke number two <laughs> knock 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 who's there a spider that's all right all the legs that's, that's good man that's good that's good for the playground cheers jim stewart johnny marmite is a stroke of genius yeah but the thing is i can hear myself saying this every time i've said this in the past i've been enthusiastic about jokes but johnny mar's been around for a long time a lot of journalists in in lots of frivolous mags have written gags about him yeah someone's probably come up with that one don't johnny you think? marmite have you got any jokes sure i do here's one from tom baz in london on non he says <laughs> Uh, greetings, says Tom. What does Martin Sheen shout when he desires his favourite fruit-based soft drink? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Apple Calypso now. Whoa. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Very good. Thanks, Tom. Oh, dear. I can't read up that one. Shall I give you another one while you're, while you're, you're waiting? Yeah. Here's one for, from um, Emma in... Actually, no, I'll, I'll read you this other one. This is from Shane in Dublin. Dear Adam and Joe, I'm a big fan of the podcast. I listen to it in bed every Monday night in a sleepy, drunken haze <laughs> after coming home from the pub. On this penumbra of consciousness, I gleefully chuckle my way to sleep. Not the healthiest habit, I admit. Here's my joke, though. What was Danny Glover's response when asked why he was throwing out a skin-tight T-shirt? I'm getting too old for this shirt. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, that's definitely made up, though, isn't it? Uh, how about this one? Why d was the 3D animator depressed? Because his life was a mesh. That's, 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 uh, that's a good technical, a good joke, technical there. joke. It's one for the yeah. folks Certain, at Pixar. Yeah, section of the audience will enjoy that. That's from Nick in Nottingham. By the way, Shane, you promised that you would cut down on your booze if I read out your joke, all right? So you stick to that promise. Here's one right now from Tom Biseth, and he says, Hi, Adam and Joe. I have a topical made-up joke, especially if, like me, you live in Leeds with the ongoing bin men strike, and, of course, everybody's experiencing the postal strike. His joke is, how do workers at an orchard show... Uh, sorry. How do workers in an orchard show their dissatisfaction with their employer? They form a won't-picket line. <laughs> a bit better than la, that, la, please. La, 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 Thank you. La, when you read out la, jokes, la, I go... La, la, la. I whoop with laughter. <laughs> do you? And you just go... <laughs> <laughs> i didn't understand it i'm too thick they won't pick it because they work in an orchard right they're picking pick things it, yeah. for a living yeah that's what they do they're picking apples picking it's cherries like, what do you do when your nose goes on strike oh okay well you've uh, reduced it to that well that's level. a classic yeah what do you do come on then <laughs> here's another one Beep. uh Beep. 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 What? Hello, here we go. Although the following joke is based around a pun and clever use of wordplay, I'm quite convinced that it has never been used before. Therefore, it's completely original and brilliant. I can't begin to tell you how proud I am of my efforts. Quote, I once scuppered a young child's plans for a non-violent protest in India. It was like taking Gandhi from a baby. <laughs> Craig Paradise from South End on Sea. That's very good. Well, there's something there, isn't there? Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. That's good. It's sophisticated. Uh, one last one from me. This is sure. Jason from Jason Stubbs. What do you call a rock band formed by a tortoise, a hare, a monkey, and an ostrich? I don't know. Smashing Pipkins. Oh, that's good. I mean, that's retro. <laughs> that's very retro. Younger listeners won't know what that is. Nice one, Stubbsy. That's a 70s TV show. Uh, can I do you some rapid-fire ones? Go on, then. Some kind of low-quality rapid-fire ones. What do you call a film-directing worm? Dinner. Wrigley Scott. Brackets probably done before. Very obvious. Kevin Tenuous Palmer Ibiza. I like it. Yeah. How does one attract uh, members of the opposite sex during a nautical disaster? By using a flirtation device. Nice. Ed Z, North London. When and where is Superman getting buried in a crypt tonight? Oh, that. I'm, you know it. That Ian Horseman. Yeah. Here's okay. One final one, right? Uh -huh. This this is from uh, this is from a family. We like family things on this show, right? Yeah. Um. So this is Tracy Gregory who sent in this little clip of uh, her young son, her three-year-old son Riley, providing a punchline for this joke read out by her partner. I think. Here it is. Oh, oh, sorry, James. I sprang that one on you. Uh, it's too a, busy stirring coffee like a little Stalin. Like a little Stalin. <laughs> Have you found it? Here we go. Okay, what do you call a line of Barbies? Barbecue. What do you call a line of Barbies? <laughs> Is that what it was? Yeah. I thought he said, what did you call a lion bar? No. 
What do you call a line of Barbies? A barbecue, that's good. That's very good. Did he, what's the story there? Did he, he didn't make that up, the child, did he? Because that would be extraordinary. Um, I don't think it was, he says, I sincerely hope that my wife and I made up this joke, uh, ourselves for our three-year-old son, and we didn't pinch it from someone. So yeah, there you go. They believe they made it up themselves. And that's good. Riley was just providing the punchline. Thank you very much for all those made up jokes. I'm sure we'll have some more next week. Right now, here's the dead weather with I cut like a buffalo. I cut like a buffalo. That's the dead weather. Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Let's have the text the nation jingle one last time. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. And it's all about uh, nicking some stuff from the street this week, listeners. It's not about that at all. It's recontextualizing about recontextualizing objects which have been abandoned in public spaces. Yeah. Nice. So here is one from Lucy Cook. No, it's not. Why does it say Lucy Cook? Oh, she's the person who's printed it out. Hello, Lucy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, hey. She works. Oh, no, it is. She works here. It is from her because she handed it she to handed me. She handed it, right. Actually, she didn't. I printed this one out. Uh. A tissue of lies. This is from David in Watford, all right? I once found an electric LED dot matrix sign on my way home one night. After a while, I spent some time <laughs> wiring up a car battery it. to it to see if it worked to my amazement it worked i found it attached <laughs> to a shop <laughs> and it said the words girls 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 nude 20p <laughs> <laughs> that's the best thing an led sign can possibly say <laughs> we had it in the kitchen until it caught fire a friend offered to reprogram it i said why would i do that I also have a working traffic light in my disco garage. Nice. You know, why are these things so desirable? For me, it's watching American sort of teen movies. 80s, and they always have road signs and stuff and neon lights, don't they, in their bedrooms? Like Tom Cruise in Risky, Risky business. business. He's got a very good neon sign that flashes yeah. while he indulges in some onanism. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's quite does. a racy scene. Yes, yes, yes. That you wouldn't find in a film anymore. And Ferris Bueller, has he got that kind of stuff around his bedroom? Bound to bound to i'm gonna go home and watch that racy scene tonight with my family that'll be fun here's one from adam from yatelity yatelity <laughs> so can that be right oh that's a tough one isn't yatelity it? my brother-in-law saw a large comfy easy chair in the road outside his house and assumed somebody was refurbishing decided to take it three days later him and all his housemates got terrible skin infections they had received bed bugs from the free furniture had to be quarantined for three weeks to get rid of the infection that is the downside that's very common isn't it i think we did that as students or a big plush sofa oh yeah. it's a bit damp never mind it'll dry out Bought it into our student flat. Scabies. Things start crawling out of it. That's right. You never know. Smells. I wouldn't go for a secondhand sofa or a discarded mattress being the worst one. No way. Joe in Primrose Hill, I found a homemade magician's box used to cut a woman in half in the street. <laughs> Is that feasible? I suppose, I if the act had myself. gone wrong. <laughs> Here we go. Look, I told myself that it was that if it was there ten minutes later, then it was definitely being thrown away and was fair game. Mm. Sure enough, ten minutes later it was still there, and I dragged it home. <laughs> My excitement was slightly dampened when I found strange stains on the metal blades, but I kept it anyway. With hindsight, I may have either ruined an amateur magician's fledgling career, spoiled a child's birthday party, or concealed evidence from a horrific conjuring blood fest. Yeah, that could have been it. I mean, did I talk to you before uh, on a slightly related note about finding this bike in France? No. I found it in a ditch, right? Discarded oh, by the side did. of the road. Yes. And then, uh, and I came back for it later as well. Yeah. After I'd hidden it behind a hedge. <laughs> Moved it and hidden it. He prob yeah, well, you know what was going on there, don't you? No, it was not he a farmer. He hadn't abandoned it. He had. But if you want to leave a bike somewhere and you don't have a lock or anything to lock it to, you might hide it in a ditch or just put it out of sight in a bush. And you hope against hope But by hope the side of a main road in the middle of nowhere? Buckley's won't come along and Listen, I feel bad it. about it this day and I'm worried <laughs> that secretly I've been cursed because it was the devil's bike. And I'm sure is, you're fine. I'm this sure is why fine. I've got my elbow problem. Well, maybe it's why your bikes keep getting That's stolen the whole time. I'm thinking. Here's a final one from Pete, brackets, student, Sheffield, close brackets. Hi, A and J. Me and my flatmates found a table football in a nearby skip. We took it late at night. It was very mucky and had dog poo on. 
Just Boggins' table football <laughs> table. <laughs> but that's another thing, isn't it? You get something home that you think is really exciting and then you play with it for a bit and then you... You discover why it was thrown discover, out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got dog poo on it. You know, don't forget, listeners, that if you have something to contribute to this during the week, if you're listening again or downloading the podcast, the email address is adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. No text during the week, please. It'll be a total waste of money! Right now, here's the beta band with Gone. That was your free play, Joe. Sorry, I... That's all right. ...failed to realise that. Don't worry. That was the beta band. No, beta band. From Hot Shots 2, their album. It's quite a melancholy selection, that one. Yeah, but it's good. Yes, very good. Very haunting, and they're amazing, beta band. They are lovely. That's it for us, folks. Stay tuned for Liz Kershaw. She's coming up very shortly. Don't forget to go to the blog and check out those highlights from the Electrical Proms. Thanks for listening. Thanks to everyone who's texted and emailed. Uh, did you say check out the podcast already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check yeah. Oh, well, the podcast comes out Monday evening. Don't forget to check that out, of course. Yeah, and the Electric Proms video on the blog. We'll and be all back that. with you the same time next week. Right now, we're going to leave you with the fall. The money is sort of tabla. Take care. Love you. Bye. Bye.